This is Story Recapped. Today I'm going to explain a drama romance film called Cruel Intentions. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. At the busy town in New York City, Sebastian Valmont is driving his luxury car on his way to his weekly therapy under Dr. Greenbaum to discuss his intense desires for other women. Dr. Greenbaum tells him that his condition may arise from how his parents treat him, so she hands him a book that she has written and discreetly charges him for the book. Sebastian convinces her that she's already cured him as he can now resist photographing her killer legs. Dr. Greenbaum informs him that she cannot see him for a month as she's on a book signing tour. Before leaving, Sebastian sees a photo of Dr. Greenbaum's daughter and tells her that she's precisely the type of girl that he wants. The therapist immediately dismisses that idea and directs Sebastian out of the clinic. After Sebastian leaves, Dr. Greenbaum receives a phone call from her daughter, Marcy, who grieves over a breakup and a raunchy photograph of her that is on the internet posted by her ex-boyfriend. Marcy explains how she fell for the man who told her she's so lovely and has killer legs, convincing her to let him take a photograph of her. Dr. Greenbaum realizes that Marcy refers to Sebastian, so she chases him down and yells at him in front of a small crowd for violating and corrupting her daughter. Sebastian smirks at his therapist as he knows she's overcharging him. When a woman asks what's happening, the wicked man slyly denies knowing who Dr. Greenbaum is and departs as he takes another woman out for a date. In a high-end New York City mansion, Catherine Mertuil, a wealthy and famous teenager, discusses her prep school with Miss Caldwell and her naive and childish daughter, Cecile. Catherine takes the innocent teenager under her wing, promising to turn Cecile into a model student like herself. Convinced, Mrs. Caldwell reminds Cecile to do whatever Catherine says to go far in life. She then wonders where Catherine gets her strength, to which Catherine shows her a crucifix and tells her that whenever she feels the pure temptations, she turns to God. Mrs. Caldwell is pleased with Catherine. However, she suddenly acts cold when Catherine's stepbrother, Sebastian, enters the room, prompting Mrs. Caldwell to leave with Cecile. After they leave, Catherine immediately snorts coke hidden in her crucifix as she tells Sebastian her true motives. Catherine plans to corrupt Cecile by having her sleep with as many men as she can, only because her ex-lover, Court Reynolds, dumped her for Cecile despite everything she's done for him. She desperately wants to destroy Cecile's reputation to teach Court a lesson. Catherine seduces Sebastian for assistance to make the initial moves on Cecile. Although Catherine and Sebastian have previously collaborated in manipulative schemes, he initially refuses as he finds her offer too easy. It turns out he's preoccupied with another conquest, a lovely student named Annette Hargrove, who has published a manifesto stating that she intends to keep her virginity until she marries. Annette is the new headmaster's daughter at Manchester Prep School, which is closed for the summer. Sebastian discovers that Annette will be staying with his aunt Helen Rosemond, in the Hamptons on Long Island, which Sebastian believes is the ideal opportunity to seduce Annette. Catherine believes Sebastian has no chance with Annette, so they place a bet. If Catherine wins, she will receive Sebastian's vintage car. However, if Sebastian wins, she will offer a night of passion because she's the only girl Sebastian can't have, and it kills him. Sebastian rejects this offer because he's too attached to his car, but yields when Catherine raises the stakes and seductively tells him that he can put it anywhere. Feeling determined, Sebastian immediately drives to his aunt's house. At Long Island, Annette rides a horse with Aunt Helen when they hear a gunshot coming from Sebastian's gun. He takes Annette on a tour of his aunt's mansion, but instead of impressing her, Sebastian ends up frustrating her as he comments aggressively towards her virtue. Sebastian even tells her that he picks up lesbian vibes from her, and Annette rebuttals that she wouldn't expect a guy like him to believe her. Turns out that she received a letter about Sebastian's playboy reputation. In New York, when Catherine visits her apprentice Cecile, who's having a cello lesson with her music teacher, Ronald Clifford, she instantly notices that Ronald is smitten with her, which sparks an idea in Catherine to use him in her plans. At the same time, Sebastian rants about getting badmouthed by Annette with his friend, Blaine. Blaine speculates that Annette's friend, Greg McConnell, might have betrayed him since they're both in Kansas and have been best friends since they were young. Sebastian thinks that Greg is getting revenge against him for being intimate with his girlfriend last year. However, Blaine believes it doesn't bother Greg and he believes that Greg is a closeted gay. This gives Sebastian an idea. He asks Blaine to hook up with Greg tonight. Sebastian pays him in return and requests to keep the door unlocked. Later that day, Greg boasts about his huge willy in front of his friends when Blaine calls him and asks if he can come over to his place tonight. Meanwhile, as Catherine pretends to care for Cecile at a picnic, she brings up Court Reynolds and asks how the two of them are doing. Cecile shares how Court has been talking a lot about dumping a bulimic girl, which Cecile finds funny, unaware that she's talking about Catherine. She then reveals that Court invited her to the Hamptons for Labor Day weekend, but she's hesitant with boys because she's never even kissed one before. Catherine offers Cecile to practice with her. Catherine asks Cecile to close her eyes and wet her lips, and then smacks her. Then, Catherine gently kisses her. 
Cecile is comforted by how simple it is when suddenly Catherine asks her to kiss her with tongue and explains how to do it. The two kiss passionately, leaving Cecile out of control. Catherine suggests trying it with Ronald sometimes. It turns out that Cecile and Ronald have been sending love letters to each other. But Cecile is afraid that her mother might find out. Catherine tells Cecile to give her the love letters, and she could arrange a get-together for them at her house. Simultaneously, Sebastian attempts to be romantic with Annette. He plays a love song loudly over the mansion and even hands her a gift containing a bag with her name on it. He asks her if she could join him at the pool, which she accepts. After changing into a swimsuit, she sees Sebastian utterly naked in the pool area. He asks her to give him time to change into his bathing suit, as if it's normal to just stand there naked. Afterwards, Annette joins Sebastian in the pool as she quotes the lines from the letter she received. He presses her to tell him who sent it, to which she refuses as she has vowed to tell no one. Sebastian pretends to be in love with her but still has difficulty seducing her. Despite their chemistry, she sees right through it and rejects his advances, claiming that she knows that Sebastian manipulates and corrupts young women for his twisted pleasure. Later that night, the frustrated Sebastian heads to Blaine's places. He enters the room, catches the two hooking up inside, and immediately captures the moment with his camera. Sebastian threatens to post the photos online for what Greg told Annette. Greg is surprised and denies telling Annette anything about him. Sebastian then tells Greg to do something for him to get Annette. The following day, Greg and Annette walk the shore while Greg feeds her Sebastian's fabricated story about his good intentions. Annette is still hesitant about him because of the letter she received. Greg convinces her to tell her who sent the letter, and Annette confesses that Mrs. Caldwell sent it to her. Later that day, Catherine watches a clip from the hidden camera she planted in the music room, hoping to get a scandalous video between Ronald and Cecile. When Sebastian arrives, Catherine immediately stops him from talking as she can focus on the clip. She ends up disappointed since Cecile receives a call right as Ronald is about to kiss her. Sebastian then tells her that Mrs. Caldwell is the one preventing Annette from trusting him, so he vows to devote all his energy to destroying her. He agrees to help Catherine in her plans to corrupt Cecile. While Catherine starts to seduce Sebastian again, she takes it as an opportunity to tell her cruel intentions to rat Cecile and Ronald to Mrs. Caldwell. When Mrs. Caldwell forbids Cecile to do what she wants, Cecile will ask Catherine for help, which she will gladly accept to take advantage of Cecile. Catherine desperately wants her plan to work out, so she talks to Sebastian to speed up Cecile's awakening. Feeling stimulated, Sebastian agrees to not disappoint Catherine. However, Catherine leaves him hanging after knowing that he doesn't have any progress towards Annette. So, that night, Sebastian calls Annette and asks her to go out. After learning Greg's thoughts about Sebastian, Annette agrees. The following day, Catherine informs Mrs. Caldwell about Cecile and Ronald's relationship and the letters. Mrs. Caldwell immediately heads home and confronts the two while they're having a lesson. She quickly ends their affair and fires Ronald, even saying racist remarks against him. Later that morning, Catherine calls a distraught Cecile and hands the phone to Sebastian, who summons her to his house tonight. He convinces Cecile by telling her that she has a letter from Ronald, but he can't deliver it to their house as Mrs. Caldwell despises him. That night, Cecile puts a doll on her bed as a disguise and sneaks out of their house. Sebastian hands her a drink, which she thinks is iced tea. After getting drunk and writing a letter to Ronald, Cecile poses for Sebastian when he suggests that she could be a model. After several weird poses, Sebastian unzips her jacket to reveal the underwear and compliments her as she poses for him. Unsatisfied, Sebastian instructs her to be more attractive by removing all of her clothes. Cecile refuses and decides to go home. Sebastian volunteers to call Miss Caldwell to pick her up, but Cecile tells him not to. Instead, he blackmails her into kneeling and begging to do what he wants. Sebastian tells him that he only wants a kiss, so she agrees. Remembering what Catherine taught her, Cecile closes her eyes and pouts her lips when suddenly Sebastian unties her pajamas and tells her that he doesn't want to kiss her lips. Sebastian then kneels and plants a kiss on her down there. The following morning, Cecile attends Aunt Helen's brunch with Sebastian and Annette. Sebastian makes a malicious gesture that disgusts Cecile, making her walk out. Aunt Helen then walks in, feeling concerned about the shortage of volunteers at the retirement home. She asks if Sebastian and Annette can go, and they agree. After the volunteer activity, Sebastian pursues Annette while maintaining a friendly demeanor to discredit his bad boy reputation. Annette knows he doesn't enjoy charity, but it doesn't mean he's a bad person. Annette finds Sebastian too hard on himself, so she makes a funny face to lighten up his mood. Sebastian smiles at her as Annette continues to make faces. Eventually, she makes him laugh. Annette is delighted that he's happy, and Annette holds his hand while he drives. Simultaneously, Cecile discloses to Catherine that Sebastian wrote the alphabet with his tongue down there and that she felt an incredible explosion after that. Catherine is delighted but remains composed as she tells Cecile that she's proud of Cecile for becoming a woman. She advises her to learn to make love to Sebastian to make Ronald happy in bed. Catherine even encourages her to make love as much as possible to anyone, which Cecile thinks would make her a tramp. But Catherine assures her that everyone does it, it's just that they don't talk about it. That night, Sebastian finally guts Cecile again, who now seems addicted to it as she asks him for another round. However, Sebastian kicks her out of bed as he's focused on writing in his journal. 
Over the next few days, Sebastian slowly falls in love with Annette, but still, he's not sure about it. Catherine reminds him that she will get his new car as a prize if he loses their bet. However, Sebastian isn't conceding yet and even tells her that the only thing that Catherine will ride is him. A little while later, Sebastian heads out to the garden, where Annette peacefully reads a book. He greets her with a peck on the cheek, but he can't control himself, and he passionately kisses her. Annette stops him and they both feel sorry for the kiss. However, Sebastian takes his apology back and confesses his love for Annette. She reciprocates his feelings but maintains her defenses because she can't control herself when with him, and Annette walks out. That night, Sebastian enters Annette's room to say goodbye as he decided to leave New York and go to France. He tells her that he feels inadequate with her and she is inconsistent with her actions and confuses him. Sebastian also accuses Annette for being a hypocrite for seeking love but refusing to accept it. Annette, baffled and defeated by Sebastian's logic, finally yields to making love with him as she locks the door and kisses him. After the intense endearment, Annette sits on the bed and unbuttons her top, but Sebastian apologizes and leaves her, now feeling guilty for leading her on. The following day, Annette flees Aunt Helen's estate, heartbroken and humiliated. Sebastian tracks her down through Greg, who informs him of her whereabouts. He finally traces her down at the station and awaits her at the end of the escalator. Annette is impressed that he found her, to which he responds that he's in love with her. Amid the crowd, the two share a kiss, and later consummate their bottled up feelings at Sebastian's place. After making love, Sebastian kisses her goodbye as she rides a cab home. Since Sebastian has won the bet, Catherine offers herself to him the next day, but he declines since his romantic focus is now on Annette. Catherine still expects her prize and teases him, but Sebastian leaves her hanging. Catherine then mocks Sebastian for becoming soft and persuades him that his feelings for Annette are merely infatuation. Sebastian is now ending their silly bet, but Catherine threatens Annette's reputation unless Sebastian ends their relationship. As a result of Catherine's threat, Sebastian abruptly ends the relationship with Annette. She doesn't believe him as she sees him shaking as if he's worried about something, but Sebastian keeps pushing her away and even tells her that he loves someone else. Feeling lost and confused, Annette kicks him out while crying in the room. Later that day, Sebastian returns to Catherine and updates her on what he'd done. He hands her a drink and expects to get his prize. On the other hand, Catherine refuses to sleep with him since she expects Ronald to come over to her place. However, Sebastian has arranged a meet for Cecile and Ronald. Catherine then reveals that she knew all along that Sebastian would end up falling in love with Annette. Even though Sebastian won the bet, she won by forcing him to lose his first true love, all according to plan. Catherine ends her revelation by telling him that she doesn't sleep with losers. Hurt and enraged, Sebastian leaves and declares war on Catherine. Sebastian calls Annette's home, but she avoids him. He heads to her house and gives her his journal, where he details all his previous conquests and expresses his true feelings for her. He wants to give the diary to Annette in hopes that she will discover the truth for herself and forgive him. At the same time, the manipulative Catherine calls Ronald and claims that Sebastian hit her, and she needs someone. She asks him to go there, for she has something to reveal, which involves Cecile. Ronald then kisses the sleeping Cecile goodbye and immediately heads to Catherine's. Sebastian is still waiting for Annette outside her house the following day, hoping she will forgive him. However, he leaves just when she is about to look for him. Simultaneously, Ronald leaves Catherine's place seemingly enraged. After a long walk, Ronald spots Sebastian and confronts him in the middle of the street outside Annette's apartment, which leads to a fist fight. It turns out that Catherine told Ronald about what he did to Cecile. Annette, who is looking for Sebastian, comes across the fight and attempts to stop it. However, Ronald accidentally pushes her towards the road where a cab is approaching. Sebastian immediately shoves Annette to safety. Instead of pressing the brakes, the driver accidentally speeds up the car, which hits Sebastian. Annette dashes over to his side, and right before he loses consciousness, he expresses his love for her, to which she responds that she loves him too. Unfortunately, Sebastian doesn't make it. His funeral marks the start of a new school year at Manchester Prep. As Catherine snorts coke at the comfort room in preparation for Sebastian's eulogy, Annette heads out of the cubicle. Annette pretends not to know Catherine, but offers her condolences and advice for Catherine to turn to Jesus in times of crisis. Catherine is surprised by what she said, but still thanks her. During the service, Catherine gives a self-contained speech to the school about her unsuccessful attempts to persuade Sebastian to change his ways and become the model student like herself. However, students begin to leave halfway through her speech. Frustrated, Catherine rushes outside the chapel to see what is happening and finds that students are reading something. Cecile then hands her a copy of Sebastian's journal, Cruel Intentions, revealing Sebastian's inner thoughts and conquests involving Catherine. The journal exposes her manipulative and deceptive ways, including the hidden substance in her crucifix. She tears up upon reading it and feels enraged and embarrassed. The headmaster opens Catherine's crucifix to confirm that it's filled with the substance. Everyone looks at her, full of disappointment. On the other hand, 
Annette drives away in Sebastian's vintage car while wearing Sebastian's sunglasses with his journal at her side. Her thoughts are racing with pleasant memories of her time spent with Sebastian. With Catherine's full efforts in constantly manipulating the people around her and hiding her true self behind an innocent and modest student, her cruel intentions will never save her as she is never satisfied. Catherine always believed that she was in control, but she never realized that Sebastian could have destroyed her at any time as he pleased because he was aware of her true nature. It was only for his self-preservation that he refrained from doing so. In the end, now that Sebastian is gone, Annette reveals Catherine's ugly and genuine side and Catherine becomes the toy herself. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.